I want to go ahead and bring Steven Garcia in here, former South Carolina quarterback, one of the few quarterbacks that has a win over Bama on his resume. Steven, how's it going, man? Yo, what's going on? How we doing? Doing good, man. Appreciate you coming on. Uh, shout out to our buddy Chris Phillips. I saw you go on uh, Spurs Up the other day. I was like, man, I, I got to get Steven back on uh, and, and talk a little 2022. You've heard us, I'm sure, kind of the opening talking about South Carolina. When you look at the state of program, I think it's as, the state of the program, I think it's as healthy as it has been. What are some markers you're looking at and some the expectation you have for this year with the roster and the schedule? To be honest, man, just listen to you guys for the last five minutes. I think you guys hit pretty much every single thing on the head. Um, the schedule, I mean, it's it's it is brutal. The SEC always is brutal. Um, but you know, like like he was saying, it's it's going to come down to Spencer Rattler if they can protect him, if they can be keep him upright. Um, I think they're going to go as far as he can take them. That being said, the schedule is a nightmare, and I think they're going to have to figure out a way to win two or three of those games, like you just mentioned, to get mm -hmm. to a bowl game. And I mean, you guys hit every single every single point on the head. So I'm kind of speechless on on that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, again, you know, you've been through it. You know how Columbia is, Stephen. You know you can win at South Carolina. This isn't one of these places where you go and average is acceptable. And I don't think South Carolina fans should take average. But if you if you if I was a gambling man, if I was a betting man, Shane Beamer is a guy that I would buy heavy for the next five years. When you look at the state of the program, how confident are you in Coach Beamer and what he's already building there? No, absolutely. And you, and you mentioned it earlier. He's uh, so he was a recruiting coordinator when I was there. Mm -hmm. So he knows how to recruit guys. He knows how to recruit guys to Columbia, and that's that's a big uh, that's a big plus for for him and where the program's going to go. I mean, they have the – I was just up there, you know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. They have the top-notch facilities. They have all the bells and whistles. They have everything that a top-tier program has. He just got to – like you got – like he was saying, you got to keep stacking these recruiting classes. You got to keep getting these good players. You got to keep – you got to find another top-tier quarterback, you know, next year and the year after that. You just got to keep on stacking and, you know, winning games. That's – at the end of the day, that's what – people you know care about just winning these games so uh you know hopefully get to a bowl game and you know like you said just keep on stacking and and get the program hopefully to where coach Burr had it you know we're winning 10 and 11 games it was that was not easy and it did take him a little time to to get that done but you know it, like you said it can be done for sure look i find the south carolina and clemson rivalry fascinating uh steven because when i was growing up you knew that either of those programs could have a great season but one was not head and shoulders above the other but what clemson and dabo sweeney have been able to do the last seven or eight seasons really is remarkable under shane beamer's um uh guidance here what do you think uh do you think south carolina can replicate what clemson's been able to do and do you think the gamecocks have a chance on the road against clemson this season I, I do. Um, I do think they have a chance this year. Um, and to be honest, I thought we had a chance last year. Uh, that obviously didn't go uh, <laughs> as, as we thought. But, um, you know, you never know. Uh, but that being said, you know, I'll probably catch a little shit for this. But I think Clemson got uh, got in, involved in the NIL a lot sooner than a bunch of the other teams did. <laughs> if, you, if you catch my drift. I like the way you worded that. I like the way you – what did Jimbo say? We were, talking, we were doing NIL before. Y'all just didn't know about it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um you know, but I'm sure that happened at Alabama. I'm sure it happened everywhere. Every single one of those top t uh, top tier schools. I'm sure we even did it. You know, uh, who knows? I know I didn't get any money, which sucked. I'm pissed off. I was born a little too early. Um, but yeah, I mean, that being said, I think uh, I think you know we do have the opportunity to to get to where Dabo was doing. I mean, he was recruiting these. He was having a top ten recruiting class every single year, like yeah, like uh, Kirby's been doing. And you know, hopefully, hopefully, Coach Beamer can do. It. I think he is capable of doing. It. I think uh, he's got the. The power, the powers that be are behind them. Um, mm -hmm. They like him up there. They love him in Colombia, and I think, like you said, players want to play for him. I personally loved playing with him. Uh, you know, he was obviously a DB coach, but you know, getting the chance to see his energy around the team, and you know how vocal he was, how passionate he is about football, and you know, he just loves the city of Colombia. It's he still has a freaking Columbia area code on his cell phone number, <laughs> which is wild. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping that he uh, that he can do it. I mean, he 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 loves he loves the city and he loves the program, and I'm looking forward to it. Well, going back to your time at South Carolina, I know you have a treasure trove of Steve Spurrier quotes and uh, experiences from us. Do you have a memory that you can share with us that stands out? Uh, there's, there's several. I, uh, I don't know if I can share them. Uh, <laughs> That's why I said you have one you can share. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not exactly PG. Um, but I think, I think one that I've, I've told a couple times is it was actually my first practice. Um, I went up there early and I'm up there and I'm walking with Blake Mitchell and a couple of the other quarterbacks and coach Spurrier starts walking up. We're doing our pre-practice warming up and he just takes the shirt off 
Just take a shirt <laughs> off. And I'm looking at him I'm like, I'm looking at this 65 year old dude with no shirt on. Just and I was like, hey, what's up, coach? He's just staring me right in my face, right in my eyes. And he goes, Hey eh, shit, yeah, just catch us some rays, young Garcia. <laughs> Uh, what a, that's I, lo- I love that one. I, we, uh, we'll have a cold soda Ooh. sometime, and, and you can tell us some of those uh, other stories. I'll tell you one. I can't remember if it was Saban or Spurrier. I can't remember if it was Werfel or McElroy that was telling us that they threw a couple interceptions in a game or, and then made a bad read and went to the sideline and looked at <laughs> the coach and was like, I'm sorry. And the coach was like, no, I'm sorry for putting you in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, was, yeah. that, was, that was a good one. Okay, I got this question right here. I want to know. Um, you know, Let's go back to your junior year. Great year for y'all. Went to the SEC championship, and you beat number one Alabama. I just want to know, what was that week like after you beat that team? I mean, were you just carried around everywhere? <laughs> like, everything there was just TV. free. You know, what, what was I mean, that week like after you beat Bama? It was, uh, it was wild. It was, it was a week-long party, and, you know, it's, you could tell because we lost to, to Kentucky the next <laughs> week. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was a blast. But, you know, people always ask, like, you know, what was the difference between the Alabama week compared to, like, any other week of the, with Coach Spurrier and, like, practicing, the, you know, um, getting prepared? Mm-hmm. And I tell people it's, it's crazy. He was as calm and chill as I've ever seen him. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he, was, he wasn't high strung. He, the only time I ever saw him that he was high strung is when we played against Florida. He didn't. He didn't yeah. give a damn about Clemson. Didn't give a damn about anybody else. He just wanted to beat Florida. That made the math you know? adds up on that for sure. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, that was a that was definitely a fun uh, a fun night and a fun uh, a few nights after that. I bet it was. I bet it was. So I'm gonna <laughs> grab a question here from the Booster Club. Jimbo Eagle wants to know which SEC school is most likely to overachieve this season. Hmm. hmm. Tough one. I hope it's us. <laughs> uh, to, be, to be honest, I, I don't. I don't know. Um, like you said, there's, I think there's just so many question marks around. You know, the the mid the mid of the the conference. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you're gonna have the Alabamas. You're gonna have the Georgias. You're gonna have these other top tier programs. Um, you know, who who knows? I, I a lot of people are high on Kentucky. A lot of people higher on Tennessee. I mean, I I don't know. I don't know anything about those guys. Um, so maybe I don't know. I, it's that's a tough one. <laughs> to to me, it's Arkansas. And, and again, I know there's high expectations, but but again, you return both coordinators. You return your quarterback. You returned veterans on the offensive line. You added some pieces on the outside, even though you lost. Then defensively, what was inherited by that staff, just from a number standpoint on defense, was an absolute disaster. Like FEMA was having to send trailers and like the Red Cross in there to help. That's how bad it was. And now they've added to it. And Sam Pittman, man, kind of like Shane, I think is a great fit at South Carolina. I think Sam, Coach Pitt, is a great fit at Arkansas. Blaine, what else? Um, we got one from Riot Highs here. Uh, if they can get a rhythm in Columbia, can it look to be the next powerhouse after Alabama fades away and maybe Georgia slows down a little bit? Mm, powerhouse. That's yeah. That's a that's a stretch. Um, <laughs> first off, I, I don't I don't see Alabama ever fading away. Um, I think I think that it's too much of a dynasty right now. I mean, maybe maybe in 10, 15, 20 years. I don't I don't know. Maybe when Saban dies, who knows? It's just uh, it's there so, so much of a powerhouse, and now you got Georgia and Kirby Smart. Like you mentioned earlier, man, that's that's uh, that's the first I've actually heard that term is stacking these recruiting classes. Mm-hmm. I actually like that a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's going to be tough to uh, to kind of dethrone Georgia as top dog in the East. I mean, that's it's going to take a it's going to take a miracle. Yeah, Blaine, uh, we'll get one more from the Boots Club. I do want to ask you this: We're here, Stephen Garcia, uh, former South Carolina quarterback. When you look at, we talk about tight ends a lot on this show, and, and I think they're still undervalued in the game. We talk about Spencer Rattler and, and his progression and, and him trying to get to the level everybody expected. How important is it for a quarterback to have a tight end in the seam that's a threat in the red zone, like a Jaheim Bell, but then have a guy like Stogner, who to me is really a why. I, I don't consider him a hand on the end of the line tight end that's going to sit there and right. you know help you on the double and work up. How important is it to have a guy to threaten the seam so it's not just a bunch of pressure on the guys outside? It's it's invaluable. Um, I mean, you look at Kyle Trask and uh, and uh, Kyle, Pittman. Yeah, that's a great that's a great. Or point. Kyle, Kyle Pitts. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's he, I mean he he was the guy. Um, anytime you can get a tight end like that matched up against a linebacker mm-hmm. who's not near as athletic, fast, speed, whatever you want to call it. I mean, it is a nightmare for those guys um, on defense. So it is, it is, it is imperative if you want to have a, a very good offense to have have a guy at the middle of the field that can get open and separate himself. For sure, it's a cover two killer and it's a two man killer on third down. Nothing yep. scared me more 
when calling two man on third and nine, and you know those safeties are gonna shade those outside guys because they always do it. And then all of a sudden you got a guy, Rucker in Ohio State murdered people on it. Oh yeah, totally. Absolutely about it. murdered. It was the only touchdown I think they scored against Bama. To be honest, we was ruckered up to seam mm. against either two men or cover two. I can't remember. You know, to me, I feel like that's why they invented Tampa too. I swear to God, it's why uh, Monty Kiffin invented Tampa too because the tight end was killing you in the seam. I swear. Were, were, Steven, were, th were there certain coverages that you were hoping to see when you got into third and long? I think he just mentioned it, the two man. Yeah. Um, I, I, I loved throwing against that. Um, mm -hmm. But then the, the one thing about two man is nobody's ever responsible for the quarterback. So anytime you would see two man. I'd call four verts and have the running back yep. go out to the flats. Yep. And I just kind of look around for a minute and just jet Steven, that's why yeah. you have to stunt the front. You have to stunt the defensive line. You cannot straight rush a quarterback on two man because that back bails, like you're saying, mm -hmm. that mic's yep. gone. I mean, everybody's got their back turned. Especially, and it the especially hell out if of that you. back chips first, you know, because it looks like he's in protection. He so we call two man go. jump coverage at Michigan, actually. But if he chips first and then is able to get out, doubly, he can't. I mean, it's hard to cover him then because the a backer has to get in coverage. That's Stop. exactly right. Wow, y'all called it jump coverage at a school sponsored by Jump Man. Real original. Dan. <laughs> not, not when I was there. <laughs> oh, that's true. Excuse me. And we had just me. switched to Adidas. It's still a sore subject. Okay, 10 I'm years sorry. later, it's still a sore subject. I know. Subject I know. Me, I'm but, sorry. All right, one more for the Booster Club. We'll get Steve. All right, Pompa Leak 90, hashtag asked Steve. And why do people think Rattler will succeed in South Carolina when he crumbled in Oklahoma, Oklahoma last year? Ooh, crumbled. Now, that's that's a very good question. And who knows? He may crumble in, in South Carolina. Um, <laughs> I, to be honest, man, I've, I've seen him throw. Um, the, he does not lack arm talent. There's no, no doubt about it. He has, he has a very live arm. Um, I can tell you this. The SEC is slightly different than uh, the conference he was just <laughs> in. Um, and that's all across the board with a D-line, linebacker, safety. I mean, Across right. the board, is going to be nine day different. Um, I'm hoping, as as an alumni, I'm hoping that he does well and he can adapt to the uh, the speed and the difference of the of the conference. Um, but like I said, it's judging from last year and how how he kind of handled that whole thing. I, I hope that he's kind of matured and grew up and kind of got over that deal. Um, otherwise, it could be another. It could be a long year for for South Carolina. Yeah. No, well, my thing too, Steve, I think you can say the same thing about Jaden Daniels going to LSU from the Pac-12, a guy who started 30 games. You don't. When you go from the Pac-12 to the SEC, the defenses don't get smaller and slower. That's that's right. not how that works. So now that you know, we're going to talk about Miles Brennan uh, here in a little bit. You know, basically, I guess you could say retiring from football. Uh, but you know, again, when you do make that transition, it is tough. But uh, my friend, I appreciate you joining us. This is great stuff. We'd love to get you back on. And I think we'll know about Spencer Rattler the first time he faces some adversity and how he responds to it. Exactly. That's when I think I, we'll know. Yes, sir. No, I 100% agree. Definitely. Well, we, we appreciate you having you on, my friend, and uh, we'll do it again soon. See you guys. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate All right, it a lot, man. See ya. See ya. All right. Hey, if you like what you heard, go ahead and ring that bell. Turn those notifications on. We're bringing it every day daily from 2 to 3 Central, and we want you here. I can hear it ringing now.